Michigan, 32. Nebraska, 29. And, brother, this is... If this wasn't an Adrian Martinez game, I don't know what is. I, I let, Let's just talk about the end of the game here. Okay. Michigan kicks a field goal to tie the game, right? 29-29, because Nebraska had just scored to take a lead. Michigan kicks a field goal with three minutes left in the game. Nebraska gets the ball back. Adrian completes a pass. He hands the ball off for a run, and on third and one, Adrian Martinez runs for three yards and fumbles. And I I, I don't know, like, at what... You and I talked about this a lot off the air, and I will will bring it up here. There is a clutch gene that some kids have that others don't. And Adrian Martinez is an incredible athlete, and he can make incredible plays when the game does not depend on it. Right. And when it gets down to crunch time and you have to have a play and and not I'm not talking about turnovers or or whatever just like just don't turn the football over kind of stuff. That's it. We saw it against Michigan State. The worst pass of the game for him was the game or the play that ended it, right? He threw a pass, intercepted, ball game over. You had to have a score there. In this situation, you you're in a tie game late and and you're just trying to either drain the clock, or make enough plays to get into field goal range. The only thing you cannot do there is turn the football over. And yet, that's what happens. Ethan said Adrian Martinez must bet against Nebraska every week because he makes the same mistake every week. Well, that's the thing. It's a different mistake every week. Like, it's, it, it all looks the same. But it's a mistake It's every a week. mistake every when time. When he needs to make the play, he just can't do it. He it, just finds a way to make the mistake more than make the play. It is so frustrating to yeah. to see because you know that he's good. If you look at the box score, 18 out of 28, 291 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, ran the ball eight times for 38 yards, one touchdown. Like, he is the offense. He makes the whole thing go. And Nebraska has been pretty good. Their defense has been really good. But you cannot be a good defense when you get put in awful situations. And that's what Martinez does time and time again. And it's drive it drives me nuts nuts because i i want them to i think football is better when nebraska is good well the game was exciting at least yes so, the, 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 last night we can't say that this was bad nebraska no okay? it wasn't because bad the nebraska. game was unbelievable the crowd was unbelievable you know i've got a couple of friends that i know that are nebraska people and they were at the game and they were tweeting pictures out in the game and it was it was an incredible atmosphere and their fans were rocking because they were in that thing and they felt like they had a chance and it's been a long time since they've been at home in a big game where they felt like they actually had a chance to win it or to see something special in the fourth quarter and so yeah i i i think that was okay and that was important it's just one of those things that when they have to make the big play to win, they don't. The post-game win expectancy in this game, Nebraska 62%. And so basically, it, for those that aren't, aren't up on the advanced stat stuff, you take those same statistics that happened last night, and you play the game 100 times, Nebraska wins at 62 out of 100. It, it's, it's infuriating. Like, absolutely infuriating. Well, we haven't even talked about the team that won the game. What do you think of Jim Harbaugh right now? What do you think of this Michigan team? And what do you think of their record of 6 and nine? So, I think that Harbaugh figured out that, no, we are not going to be Ohio State. We're not going to be Alabama. We're not, like, we don't have that talent. But we can have an identity. And we can That's be right. tougher than all these other teams that we're going to play. And so long as they play to an identity and don't make mistakes... They are a really good football team. Now, a really good let football me tell you, team. Let me tell you who I think he's trying to be. I think, And I don't think they're this. I think he's trying to be Iowa. Yes, with a better offense, I think. A better offense, but not nearly as good of a defense. No, but no, no. But still, we're winning the football game from the defensive front. We're trying to win the turnover battle. We're trying to take the ball away actively instead of just getting stops. We're, we're, we're getting better at those things. I think that's what he's working on. And then from an offensive perspective, I want to run the ball and I want my offense, I want my offense to play more safe. But still, when the opportunities come for big chunk plays, don't be afraid of them. That's exactly what Iowa looks like, just not nearly as good on defense. Yeah, yeah, I, I, can, 
I can totally agree with that. Trying uh, to be Ohio State, trying to be Alabama, you're exactly right. Is it working? Didn't work for the first four years, whatever. It, now, we're going to be somebody different. We're going to be Big Ten football because those things aren't Big Ten football. There's a reason that the only team that's ever been successful playing that way has been Ohio State, and they just have so much better talent than everybody else. They have national greatness of talent. Nobody else in the Big Ten has that. Zero other teams have that. Right. So – I've got to be great at like the rest of the Big Ten. Yeah, play play to an identity. That's, that's the right. that's the best way to do it. Like just play to to what you're capable of, and you can absolutely do it. Uh, Mike G asked in the comments, took my breath away a little bit when he asked. Over <laughs> under uh, turnovers from Martinez against Iowa. I am sure. Uh, let, let's set it at three and a half, and I would probably yeah. go over. Would okay. What number would would it have, so if it got to four and a half, would you go under or? Would, I might would still take the over because I feel like okay. I might get plus odds there. What what about five? At, at five, I'm going under. Okay. At, at five, I'm I'm going under. There. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how big of a number do we have to get to before before we actually say before we take an under. Right, I, don't, I don't think he'll take that number. It'd have to be an even five. Like yeah. It, if it's five and a half, it's for sure an under. But I, oh, yeah. even five, yeah, I would even even the worst quarterback in the world doesn't turn the ball over six times in a game. They usually get benched. I I wish, God, I wish he was good. Like I mean, he's he's good. I just I wish he wouldn't make these these mistakes because it's so it's just heartbreaking. Like they want to be good so bad, and and I think that the sport is better when they are good, and yet we have this time and time again. So, well, this is the last year that he's going to be there because uh, he's been there for about a shade under a decade. So, yeah, it's been it's been a little at while. some point in time they're going to have to find another quarterback or they can't play football anymore. Michigan, I was a little surprised that they uh, threw the ball as, as much as they did. They they threw uh, 39 times. Cade McNamara was 22 out of 38. J.J. McCarthy came in through one pass. Uh, I, I thought they would lean a little more on Hassan Haskins and, and Blake Corum. Corum, they only ran 13 times, 39 yards. I mean, he was getting 6.8 a clip. So I don't know what the deal was there, but either way. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.